Hi there, welcome to QA Box. Let's test. In this video, we are going to talk about unit testing. So, what is unit testing? Why do we do unit testing? How do we do unit testing? And what are test doubles in unit testing? So, Micon has provided this test pyramid, and this test pyramid is a metaphor that tells us to group software tests into bucket of different granularity. It gives us an idea of how many tests we should have in each of these groups. As you know that there are different units in a software, right? So when we test those units separately in isolation, then those tests are called as unit testing. And then we start merging these units together and the test that we perform once the integration between those two units are done is called as integration test. And at the top, you know, once the whole system is ready, it's like, you know, user is ready to interact with the software. Then we write those specific test cases, all right? And there are different tools available in the market for each of these type of testing, right? So for unit testing, you have got Sinan uh, for JavaScript framework. You have got Mokito for uh, your Java applications, right? Then in integration testing, you know, we... Uh, use uh, either Postman or we use your rest assured or right so test the integration part and then for user interface testing we have UI tools like Selenium, Cypress, WebDriver, IO and so on. So we write more number of test cases at the unit level and lesser and lesser as we go up this test pyramid and therefore uh, it takes the shape of a triangle. All right. Now, the advantage of having more test cases at the unit level is the cost of fixing the bugs whenever we find a bug once a test case is run is less because there are lesser dependencies, which means that the points of failure are less, right? So that's about, you know, this left arrow. As we go up, the point of failures increases the cost of fixing bug increases and because the dependencies are increasing all right so now in terms of speed right unit test cases are faster right uh, compared to your ui testing and hence the reliability and precision you know as you could see that you know it goes uh, you know uh, down as we move from top to bottom all right so it is important we write good unit test cases right so what is a unit test then so first of all we have to break it down into two right so unit and test test we know that in test we write assertions right in assertion what do we do we check the expected result is matching with the actual result that's testing all right so now what what is a unit so unit you can say that is the smallest speed of piece of code that can be logically isolated in a system Many says that it is a function, a subroutine, a method, or a property. That's what you call as a unit. However, I feel like we can safely say a unit in unit testing is a unit of behavior and not a unit of code. Some says, okay, hey, 10 lines of code or a function, right? So I, I prefer to say that, you know, a unit in unit testing is a unit of behavior, all right? And that's how we are going to define the functions as well, all right? So a unit test then is an automated test that has the following characteristics all right so in unit test we verify a small piece of code which we also call as unit right we can do it quickly all right and we can do it in the isolated manner and the point three is the most arguable but the most important point because it means if a class has dependency on other, another class or several classes, you need to replace all such dependencies with test doubles. So there are various test doubles available like, you know, we can spy a method, we can stub, we can mock, you know, they are fakes and, you know, they are dummies, right? So these are all test doubles and we are going to talk about them in the upcoming slides. So with the help of, you know, isolation, uh, we can you know focus on the class under test exclusively by separating its behavior from any external influence okay for example a case would be in a function right a function job is to return a string but then the string is being pulled from let's say the database and for that you are using an external library that's a dependency right you have not written that library so 
if you do not segregate the library with your function right we are not testing that in isolation your unit test case could fail because of a bug in that library all right so we have to separate our dependencies now an example of dependence in this particular case could be and this is a very simple case so there's a calculator class and you know it's written into javascript and herein you could see that the first method is the constructor and then we have this method right this method has got no dependency at all all right and then this method sum right in this sum method what we are doing is we're passing in two arguments and then uh, you know we are calling this function so this function is dependent on this function so while testing this function right we want to make sure that we handle this dependency first because we are testing this function and we would like to see whether this function works properly or not all right so we have to get rid of this dependency okay so why to do unit testing all right so let's understand this graph all right so you have the works are spent uh, represented by your y axis and then on the x axis we are representing the progress right so this curve represents without test and this represents with test so project without test has a head start but quickly slows down to the point that it's hard to make any progress all right it's hard to maintain the software all right if we do not write the thorough tests all right so this phenomena of quickly decreasing development speed is also known as software entropy all right so it is important to write test cases and not just for the sake of writing test cases it is important we understand what do we have to test and so that we can write good test cases all right so now we understand that it is important to write the unit test cases but then how to structure our unit test cases so we are going to use the pattern triple a all right so triple a splits each test into three parts arrange act and assert to test one behavior so arrange is something like you know you are arranging all the preconditions you are ensuring that the state from where you have to start your test execution is achieved all right so once the state is achieved then you start with the actions that you want to perform so acts are actions and once you perform the action you want to check whether the state has been changed from let's say x to y so you do that with the help of assert all right so there are few things that we have to take care of we have to avoid multiple arrange act and assert sections inside a single test case and avoid if statements in test because when you're saying if means that you know uh, there could be multiple behaviors within your test case and that's not what we want to test in unit a unit should display just one behavior okay so what does arrange i mean arrange section of a unit test case method initializes objects and set the value of the data that is to be passed to the method under test all right it's a precondition that we have to achieve it's a state of the application or state of the method that we want to achieve a state of the data all right the act section invokes the method under test with the arranged parameters all right so then you're calling that method and the assert section verifies that the action of the method under test behaves as expected now one example of this could be so if you could see uh, this is one function right again written into javascript right but it is not dependent the con this is a concept which is not dependent upon which programming language you're working on so in this example on the left hand side so you could see that this is a function in which what i'm doing is i'm invoking a call uh, to an external uh, resource right and with the help of an external dependency axios all right and here in what i'm doing is so i have used a test double which is stub right and we are going to again talk about that in the upcoming slide but here what i've done is so in the arrange what i've ensured is that my test case is not dependent upon this endpoint all right so i've stubbed this particular request and i'm returning a fixed value which is one and then i'm acting means i'm invoking this function as you could see passing in all the required parameters 
and at the end i'm asserting the expected result with the actual result all right so this is an example of triple a so now what are testable we have been talking using this term a lot so testable in automated unit testing it may be necessary to use objects or procedures that look and behave like their release intended counterparts but are actually simplified versions that reduce the complexity and facilitate testing so testable is a generic meta term used for these objects or procedures right so you are getting rid of all those you know xhr uh, dependencies network you know file dependencies database dependencies and replacing that with some kind of dummy objects right so that you can test your function in isolation and these are different test doubles that are available to us right so first one is dummy so objects are passed around but never actually used usually they are just used to fill parameter list right it is simple of all it is a placeholder required to pass the unit test right unit in the context does not exercise this placeholder dummy can be something as simple as passing null you know or a void implementation with expectations to ensure it's never leveraged all right so the next one is fake so object actually have working implementation all right but usually take some shortcuts which make them not suitable for production so fake basically is used to simplify a dependency so that unit test can pass easily it merely provides a way for the interaction to occur in a self consistent manner a common place where you, you would use fake is database access okay so faking it out stub uh, stub provide canned or you know hard coded answers to calls made during the test usually not responding at all to anything outside what's programmed in for the test so it is used to provide indirect input to the software and the test coming from its collaborators or dependencies these inputs could be in form of objects exceptions or primitive values you know unlike fake stubs are exercised by software and the test example we can use a stub to return a fixed face value and in the previous example you know the code that i showed you you know i stubbed that axios request all right so then what are mocks so mocks are stubs that also record some information based on how they were called all right however mocks uh, and mock expectations are fake methods you know like spies uh, with pre programmed behavior like stubs as well as pre programmed expectations all right a mock will fail your test if it is not used as expected mock should only be used for the method under test in every unit test there should be one unit under test okay if you want to control how your unit is being used and like stating expectations up front as opposed to you know asserting after the fact use a mock and spy a test spy is a function that record arguments you know return value the value of this and ex exception thrown if any for all its call so spy is a variation of behavior verification instead of setting up behavior expectations spy records calls made to the collaborator software under test then can later assert the recording of the spy it's it's like you know you can compare it with uh, cctv right so it monitors who is uh, you know if a cctv is installed outside your house it monitors you know who has entered how many times that person has entered and right uh, what that person was carrying when that person entered the house and so on all right so these are uh, various test tables that are available and it depends upon you know what library we are working on so like i mentioned for um, java uh, script right we have got this synon.js which is uh, based on you know uh, their official website it's a standalone test spies stubs and mocks for javascript right and then we have the mockito and again the statement is from the official website that you know mockito is a tasty mocking framework for unit test in java thank you so much